We made our way past the mountains of shipping containers and back to where we first stopped. I saw Virgilis and Charon on a bench watching us approach. The latter of the two was clearly suffering from crushing boredom. Sharon ate ice cream. It was cold, but disappeared fast. Did it not have the putrid scent of the sea? Putrid? Sharon doesn't know what that means. Tis a flavor not unlike licking a fish. Long girl licks this funny taste. Sharon, shudder, shudder. Something's happened by the looks on your faces. Explain. Allow me to explain. Upon my arrival at the promised location, that is none of my concern. I only want to know what intel you have learned. And make it short. We know where the Golden Bull is. It is in a little bottomy court branch in the middle of the Great Lake. Of course, it's in the little Hadami Court branch. Did you learn anything else? We obtained its variable coordinates. I know you're about to say that's it, that's all you got, or something, but just listen to the trouble we went through, too. No, that's good enough. Almost makes me want to applaud you all. Oh my. Virgilis, there was... I know exactly what you're about to tell me. You do? I will deal with it. Stay out of this. Oh, is that what you and Charon were doing? The middle stuff? You look impatient, Ishmael. I see that our earlier consultation did not ease your anxiety. Of course not. I don't even know what's happening with my mission. We're waiting blindly through a misty sea. And here we are shoving our noses in everything everywhere. It's driving me up the wall. Ah, you must know that no path is ever direct in the Great Lake. I didn't expect this much lack of patience from someone who spent most of our life here. Can I assume the mess you've left in the mess? Can I assume the mess you've left in the minute shoulder is also a consequence of your impatience? That's well, clearly an unintentional mistake. If it wasn't, you would be sitting before me with your throat. You wouldn't be sitting with before me with your throat intact. Why do you fail to look further, Ishmael? By now, you must have realized what awaits you at the end of this journey. That contract clause you're so impatient about is bound to make an appearance as long as you follow the manager's peculiar misadventures. Your combative attitude against the manager, manager will only delay the inevitable. Not inevitable, but inevitable? It happened four times. That's not a very big sample. Well, I'm good at reading these trends. We're so sure about it, then fine. I won't get let my frustration get the better of me. I won't step out of line, not any more than necessary. Ishmael, what happened, happened. You will still have to write up a form explaining your actions and the circumstances surrounding them. Gladly. As long as the guide is right. 
Ice cream. Have you brought us any ice cream by any? Well, they're not. I was merely curious of the famed ice cream of Marlin Port. I shall board the bus bus. Bus boat post haste. Oh, he's, he's disappointing. I appreciate the effort, Isang. Your appreciation is more than enough. He's not going to answer me anyway, but what were you two up to? Dante is asking a meaningless question. <laughs> you can at least translate it properly. <laughs> Don't let them rub off on you, you don't they? What was I actually supposed to do? Bring a tub of whale ice cream for everyone? That wasn't the question! Not even the meaningless one! I really like the background art. Still going. So, what? I don't know what to do. 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 So, uh, Ishmael, there's a lot of picor branches away. Always away. Why don't you rest up for a bit while you can? That's what we always do, anyway. Honestly, that's nice, Gregor. Because, frankly, y'all need it. <laughs> At least let me take the next shift. I've done my fair share of night watches. Gregor's yawn betrayed his confidence. Ishmael didn't care. She wasn't going to move from her station anyway. Ishmael looked like she was waiting for something to happen, or maybe she was deathly afraid of something. She did not, not even for a second, leave the telescope, courtesy of rain, most likely installed on the modified Mephistopheles. Can just start saying Mephi because it's easier? Uh, that's a good attitude, Swabi. It's been a long-held belief that letting your guard down and to let your comrades down. So this is her thoughts out of curiosity, but she simply replied that Virgilus had already acted upon the matter. If the executive manager would not take action, then that was that. She also explained that while she would not hesitate to clash with Ishmael again, should that need to rise, she would not continue any of the pointless tussle that only lowered the team's morale. I guess that's good enough. Hmm. But we're in the middle of a lake. And as long as we stick to the laws of the Great Lake, I don't see us getting the excuse. There ahead. Ishmael suddenly got up and hurried to the cabins as though she had noticed something bumping through the telescope. Attacked by anything, my bad. <laughs> Time to drift again, redhead. It's too late to change course. That trick won't help us here. They went through the trouble of hiding themselves in an artificial fog of war. We're obviously their target. It's a matter of time before they catch up with this ship. Now that they know our location. Deal with them as you will. Manager permit us to board their ship. Are you sure that boarding the ship is the best course of action if we want to save our ship? According to my experience, yes. Okay, I'll leave it to you then. I hope you'll continue to make wise choices like that. As I were to leave it, she seemed to be going along with me for now. With that, I took a, step, a few steps behind the other sinners and watched her. They moved their ships with harpoons. Force them in a melee range, somebody grab I'm the helm and turn it on my signal. And someone should be on standby ready to shut the engine off at the right moment. 
Who is you? Bring some. You away for a the wheelhouse. Ishmael's explanations were rapid and confident. Otis nodded along affirmatively. The other sinners were quick to follow their instructions. Watching Ishmael throw a razor sharp harpoon toward the pirate ship, I started to feel that something was off. There they were, the sinners, working well together like clockwork, but underneath all that, maybe that all that mattered to them was their own goals. I was wondering if all the times I had spent thinking and hoping and contemplating about our futures together were pointless. This thought lingered for a while in my head. Okay, she still has it. God damn it. Ishmael. I'd really like it if you lost the Pionara. Tattoo. After Ryoshu and Raja mentioned it, I'm wondering if I'm forgetting. Nimbus Company. Siegfried. No, that doesn't. Hmm? Totally, Chupungo I mean, he does have a fluffy ass coat. Would it be Siegfried? That big brother that they mentioned? But that also seems odd. <laughs> He's a fixer. His affiliation's with K Corp, not the middle. Right? Granted, Roger's and uh, Ryoshi's reaction to him that for both of them to have that overlap makes me think that it is sacred. But then I also would have expected Don Gu to get excited about it. But he's a K Corp fixer. Why would he be here? <laughs> He'd be in that district still. Ideally. And not leaving it. Uh. Silhouette again. <laughs> Two for one special. <laughs> I feel like that one's more consistently getting multiple at once.
개화하였구려 이 순간을 어딘가에 담고 싶군 이 불꽃이 필요하시다면 I wanted the other one. Get the one with the big brother in the background. Uh, oh no. Oh, 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 no. This one actually might be the first struggle. This favored, that one struggle. Favored, favored, favored. Uh. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it, Ishi. I'm still wave one and we're at turn five. Ah, this might be the first one I have to redo for EX. I'm not gonna have to do it right away, but definitely later. No. I might get the cost I need. Dominating, dominating, dominating. Not opposed, dominating, dominating, dominating. Who's dominating favored? Beautiful. AOE moves are the best. This will hit all of them. Extra staggers, 174 damage. Someone's dead. And y'all are about to be. This line is so long. Dead. Dead. And dead. Some sours just so good. In creative efforts, we were gonna board your ship first. You've got places to be and things to do, okay? You answer my questions, lie, or flap your gums meaninglessly, and I'll tear these lip 
tear the lips off your mugs. What is on you? You say you plunkers after us. <laughs> Can't let someone who dared lay a finger on a first mate leave in one piece. Your very breast brings shame to our syndicate by Captain Hoop's orders you won't leave here alive. Ain't that plenty marvelous? Plus, I like seeing a good camaraderie. So, what I say about flapping your guns meaninglessly? <laughs> We're no tenderfoot, he stupid son of bachelors. That's a neat insult. What a clingy bunch. We stared their first mate's life, and this is the thanks we get. I thought she said we'd regret it if we did kill her. I think that's what Smi meant that we'll regret it if. No. Your juvenile whining, that's not from shame. Huh? When all of your mates lay dead, consumed, manipulated, and led into a meat grinder by the collective insanity of a mad woman, when you are left in that endless void where the only sound owned is the beating of your heart. Wait. And when you realize that, your heart continues to beat because it's still desperately pathetically clinking onto life despite all that. Uh, that's when you'll feel true shame. Wait, wait, looking at that sorry state of your bow, oh, I can hazard. You have no clue what you're doing out here. Spare me, I'll tell you what you need to know. I'll even put a good word to the boss man for you. Nothing to lose here, Ayla. Unless you won't have anything to put a, a, in a good word if you kill me. In my hand 30, spare me and may just sail out of this lake with your... I'm tired of listening to these inane meaningless pleas. I'm starting to get a sense of what Ahab did and why Ishmael was so bothered by Pilate's memo and calling it indoctrination essentially potentially being what Ahab did to go on the hunt for the whale of putting that focus but then basically everyone basically sucking up to the slaughter potentially and Ishmael definitely seems to be showing playing a like survivor's remorse in that regard. That was the last run, right? Let's go back to our ship. The ship was still as death as the sails fluttered a forlorn dance in the winds. I imagine we'll still run into Smee and Hook eventually. Or Smee again and Hook. On top of it. Okay. I think this will be the last one I do, and then I will be calling it for this recording at least. So something's been bothering me. Wasn't it weird how they all seemed so certain that if we kept going this way, we'd run into something other than We'd run on into some other huge disaster. 
There's nothing of no managers but a byproduct of their firm belief in their advantage over us. I have observed an oddity, however. They installed numerous spikes on their lowest side of their ship's hull. Are they now for ramming into other vessels? I had heard of such tactics were occasionally used in naval combat. They were installed too far low in the water to be used to be useful as means of ramming other ships. It can be an ex explore extrapolate extrapolated. Ugh. I've heard the word, just not seen it spelled. Extrapolated from the metal metal level of corrosion that the spikes concentrated on the keel of the boat have been installed recently. How did you see the keel of the boat? The water was clear, uh, close than it appeared from a distance. Maybe they were trying to. St oh, are we gonna get a kraken? <laughs> Stop something from climbing up the ship? <laughs> can imagine that if a fish would swim blindly onto the keel of a boat, they're not birds crashing into the windows. Maybe it was something, you know how superstitious pirates can be, what if a, it was like a good luck charm? Maybe we should let assistant manager pilot, should have let assistant manager pilot head along. You know anything about this, Fidel Faust? No pertinent information has been updated. It sounds like a computer. <laughs> I feel like that's the real answer to this. She's not flips. She's computer. And that's how she gets these, like, updates of information. Ah. <sighs> The most we could do is to ensure that we are not we do not violate any laws of the Great Lake. Let's continue our journey to the Monomy Corp branch with the variable coordinates Pilot gave us. Paranoia of the unknown weighed heavily on our, our shoulders. After an indeterminate amount of time, Otis, we will have to steer the ship portside. What? Otis, who was looking out ahead from the bow of the ship, whipped around. Whatever Fal said seemed to have hit her unexpectedly. It hasn't been an hour since you told us that we have to cross the zone in a straight line. We are falling short of our target speed. At our current rate, we will be struck by the next zone's waves as soon as we exit here. Is that the damn law of the zone? Indeed. Though our encounter with the pirate was a rapidly resolved, we still fell behind schedule. The variable coordinates now points us to a different route. How much time are we going to have, have to waste here? According to the variable coordinates, the necessary roundabout path will cost us three more days. Huh? Let us bit our lip with discontent before suddenly turning in my direction. Okay, manager, I have a genius plan, a plan that will not only accelerate this operation, but also increase our chances of securing and rescuing the lives of the LCB agents. We will waste three more days to see, so there is very little guarantee for their well-being. Well, what's the plan? We keep going forward. That, uh, just slowly, slowly raise the acceleration lever. What? Hmm? Are you nuts? We'd be sailing right into the waves. You know that. I know what the waves are, Swabi. I'm not as ignorant as the Great Lake as you might think. You have plenty of experience weathering and conquering the waves as well, haven't you? Yeah, but that's because they were unavoidable, because we lacked enough information to take the roundabout path. I've never sailed knowingly into the waves before. But you still prevailed, didn't you? And that was when you didn't have something to bring you back. I say this is well within our capabilities. Besides, there is the added benefit of accelerating our mission and the higher possibility of rescue that the executive manager and a few underlings wanted. 
It was clear to me that you, Ishmael, weren't so happy with how slow our progress has been. What is it? Did you suddenly gain a yearning for three days sunbathing break? Instead of responding to Otis' sarcastic remark, Ishmael squinted in the direction of the boat was speeding in. The tides, the odor, the speed, the color. The lake over there is the blue whirling lake of murk and fishery. I haven't suffered its waves before, but I know many ships that have, many, many which are now lying at the bottom of that lake. Fine. As long as we don't join them. What if we just take a quick look and feel like it was too much, we can just go to the back the way we came from, right? Go back- there's no such thing as going back in this lake. Your decision, Dante. Let's try following Otis's plan. Understood. Crossing the zone's border to the target lake. You're gonna be kidding me. Otis, you better be right. As soon as his words left the snail's mouth, there was a flash in the sky. Thunder? It's really starting to pour. We're in the eye of the storm. Wait, but the sky was clear just moments ago. How could this... The waves are already here, manager. That was an entertaining display. Sharon, it seems like a good idea to test the switch. Ooh, what is this? Okay, switching to Enduro mode. Huh? That was when reality began to sink in. What had happened to, what it was, what happens to, and what will happen to everyone and everything that enter or the lake without preparation for what is to come. Huh? What should- what should we do now, Ishmael? There's this adage that every greenhorn sailor of the Great Lake hears before they set their first sail. There's but one thing you can count on, on if you find yourself in an unfamiliar lake whose waves are alien to you. A colossal wave rises before... rises to its crest before us. Why is it look like eyes in the lake? S-I-C. Ready your weapons if you want to delay the inevitable. It's not your selling prowess, your far-seeing eyes of a path iron are the unbreakable bond between you and your mates. Many sailors fail to endure the trial and instead choose to become sacrifices to the depths of the lake. Something's climbing onto our ship! Israel and Otis can trust nothing but your own resolve and hold steadfast in the face of terror, in the face of calamity. Though the raging lake may remain indifferent to the will of your meager existence. Oh, this one's gonna be... Oh, they're like little chains! Okay, this is gonna uh, be an interesting... Oh, wait! It's not like an anomaly fight? I'm still doing... The normal? I kinda didn't expect that. I'll take it dying in one hit sequence. Starting to think spikes were to keep them from like that from calling up. That one's bigger. 
I don't have enough. I need more yellows. Yeah, I think we're fine with that. The babies are staggered, and this is a turn two, only two wave thing. to knock that hand off though? I don't think so. <laughs> now it's under mind to rightly describe that creature. Oh, they're... Are they just all called whales? The unfathomable entities inhabiting the depths of the lake are called whales. And those that emerge from them are called... Mermaids. Oh. Uh, okay. Interesting. I expected the whales to be much more traditional and some of them not to be. So those little things were mermaids, but the hand was a whale. That's the whale of the porous hand. I was really hoping to avoid that one. Is that one of the whales they were talking about at U Corp? Do mermaids reach it too? So I read about that once as a child, but these don't look anything like how they did in the books. Yeah! Mermaids, I still remember the horrible bedtime stories my brother used to tell me about them. So they make perfume out of these things? Isn't this a good time for you to lend us a hand for once? Really? That's the guy who practically spectated like a bystander when we got slaughtered back at K-Corp. He didn't even blink. Oh, I did wave at us, though, but I couldn't wave back because my wrist was getting snapped in half. Hung Lu, you're, you're too happy smiley about that. Great! This is a moment where... I feel like if the ship goes down, it's gonna cause more problems for him than just the sinners dying. <laughs> of course I wouldn't say I don't live by as Mr. Syphilis sinks. If it ever comes to that, but know that I will only take action under the very under a very particular set of circumstances, in which all of you are decimated. The enemies have crossed the manager's head and are about to tear tear the hands off that clock. Are are you serious right now? Dante, I can't allow them to take the company's precious assets right before my eyes, now can I? So I'm afraid you won't see me step in before every single one of you are dead. 
실력 좋다는 것좀 부풀려진 게 아니었을까? Drudge, don't antagonize Virgil. Mr. Guide, are you really good to say? Maybe the stories about you were all just tall tale, you know? That's no. Do not. <laughs> yeah, even Don Q is just like ah, you know. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just not. The two previous victims of Virgil's interjected, albeit in hollow voices, to repute Roja's rather dangerous remark. So either take them out, welcome them aboard with open arms, or whatever, I'm leaving it all up to you. Roja's playing with fire with those statements. Oh. Wait. No. Wait. Wait, too. Okay. There's still more. But post last recording session. So this moment with the pilot, and I don't think I talked about it then, him talking about how they were knowingly potentially going to die going into their mission and sort of happy and willing to do it and Ishmael's reaction being they're basically set up for the slaughter and she seems to have a very angered reaction to it and After playing, after stopping yesterday, I was thinking about it more and I'm starting to wonder if Ishmael is referred to a she of a she who she wants seemingly revenge on and I'm starting to consider that maybe that she isn't necessarily Moby Dick, the whale, the white whale rather potentially it is more directly revenge against ahab because ahab is obsessed with the white whale in moby dick and it's ahab's obsession that really leads to that crew's um tragedy i guess is the word i'll use for it so i'm coming at this from Knowing what I know from the book, I personally would not like to see a survivor, but if there was going to be one, having it be Ahab, and potentially Ahab even still now, obsessive over the white whale, even after loss of leg, egg, and all the damage that has occurred to, I assume, her in limbus version but still obsessive over the white whale and ishmael now having her own obsession on ahab the other thing that i started to wonder is virgil mentions to ishmael that doing this mission doing this getting this golden ball is going to be a step further toward her like contract requests and I'm starting to not only wonder what hers is, but also what were the other's characters previously. Uh, oh, and we do have some new members to the party. Um, so I decided to throw with the extra threads I have, I decided to... I think I had uh, the spouse from the Walpurgis Night already at three, but she's gonna be around. I got Heathcliff Rabbit recently, so that one I'm gonna be training up, and I haven't touched the Moral Officer for Otis yet, but she that's my only three star for Otis, so I'm gonna start working on that one. So, going into the fight, 34. Oh. Little bit of uh, Get my real shoe. That is good. Get Roja. 
Halloween. And yeah. And things still go south. They may get swapped out, but I'm trying to upgrade these specific ones. Neutrals! Okay. I'm so surprised this is not under, like, the anomaly kind of fights where I'm directly pointing. I'm also wondering what other kinds of mermaids and whales we might see. Because this whale specifically names this as a specific type of whale. So, that does suggest that there are other types who do different things. And definitely the... Potentially the white whale that showed up during the before teens excursion that the pirates and the middle man person big brother decided we need to get the hell out of here kind of thing um looked like it had a bunch of spikes on it could be harpoons actually not necessarily it has them normally but harpoons sticking out of it that might that's more likely it i thought it through <laughs> I think even in the book, there is a point where harpoons are still sticking out of it from Ahab's um, prior uh, encounters. I think there's one within the book that they encounter, and then it gets away. And then, like, the final time. So there. Or it's from his... Ahab's original encounter with it that got his leg stolen. That still left the harpoon there behind. Ooh, neutral. Okay. He's the best we got. <laughs> okay, sir. So many. Oh, wait, there's one left. One right. Feels like it should have like a comic, comic you little cry symbol coming off the face. Oh god, there's oh there's four waves. Shit. Well, actually, do we have enough? Do we have what I need, sir? Do we have what I need? Thank you. And your first. Perfect. Because I might not finish this in 10 turns without this. One fifty-three, and I saw some staggers go off. Definitely for the tiny ones. So the Hong Lu, you're probably next, because you're the only other one with the Naoi attack. If he's on camp, repeat his for the next one. Uh, when you're that should be enough to still take. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so do we have another sun shower? And we can't do that. We don't have enough bloom. Shit. Okay. Dominating, 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 dominating. Oh wait, let's do this dominating. A lot of pose. Dominating, dominating, dominating. And neutral favorite. <laughs> Permission to sing, Chen. I'm just so adorable. Two seventy. Oof. Okay. Can't do it again. And I doubt I have the thing. Nope. Well, alrighty then. Damage. This one says struggling. Now it's not. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna have to repeat this one. Um. Okay, let go. I was wondering if it was about to come aboard. <laughs> How many left? None. And this is the last one. There was something off about those mermaids that crawled out of that whale. A feeling not so different from looking at an abnormality or distortion. Mermaids... were they human once? I guess I should have explained better. Not every creature that lives in the Great Lakes are called whales. Whales specifically refer to... Everything in the Great Lake that can parasitize a human. Oh, this now brings deeper issues. The white whale might have made parasites out of the Pequot crew. So we still might see Queequeg, Ahab, attached to the white whale. Potentially. Oh, this is a development. And whales give birth to mermaids. And where do the mermaids come from? There are people devoured by whales that came with the waves. There's no guarantee that we won't meet the same fate. Oh, absolutely. Okay. We're potentially going to be fighting the mermaids made from the crew of the Pequod. See, now you know why you could turn the clock clock back, clock all day and fail to bring us back. 
See now, the race will be unrelenting, unabating. And Ishmael, who'd already weathered and braved these endless crashing waves, was starting to snap strand by strand. I have a mission that I can't fail. Huh. Now, okay, with this context, maybe it's not just about revenge on Ahab, but... Is there a portion... And I'll kill everything that stands in my way. Is there a... Desire to kill those who became parasites of the white whale to sort of free them from that fate. Is now where my brain is going. And since they have mentioned Queequeg, Quick, I'm wondering if that's her goal is maybe not killing Ahab out of revenge, killing Queequeg to free her from that fate. Okay, I'm pro I'm processing this as it goes. Okay, even if I were to stumble, even if I even a part of me were to fall apart, I'll see it through to the end. Determined and ferocious, both good attitudes to have when sailing on an adventure. Uh, because our voyage is just getting started. True. We've really just begun. What was that? Huh? Don't tell me this was already the end of it. And I was one chapter away. I was probably one chapter away. Oh, I was! Oh, no. Damn. I'm a little upset, but that's kind of why I did these in sessions, because I also, I managed to make it this far, partly because I had a level <laughs> right then, so, but now that I've gotten to the end of this first section, I am very curious, um, and that, uh, that now has changed some of my ideas just from this, like, I went into on 518 with revenge plot and now it's potentially salvation plot of saving the Pequod crew and I'd say primarily Queequeg would be the focus of someone she Ishmael would want to save not necessarily Ahab 